Shore A scale and double O or double OT scale for measuring hard and very soft silicones. One of the core pieces of knowledge that you need to understand mold making and casting with silicone and other flexible materials is an understanding of the Shore A scale and relative to that, the double OT scale. We've recently introduced two new lines of platinum silicones, both extra soft for medical simulators, as well as firmer silicones for molding and casting applications. So I thought this would be a good time to cover the new silicones, as well as to revisit the Shore A scale, and of course, the lesser known double O or double OT scale. Now to begin, it's important to understand the function of these two scales. These are industry standard measurement scales for measuring soft materials, specifically elastomer or rubber materials. Now the double O scale is on the lowest end. That is the extra soft scale for measuring very soft materials, typically materials that are used for simulating organic tissue or human skin, that sort of thing. And then the Shore A scale measures everything above that up to almost a semi-rigid plastic. Now the way this scale works, this is all based on what's called a durometer. And a durometer is the gauge by which we measure a material to determine its place on that Shore A scale. Now there's two different durometers we're going to use for this video. And that is the Shore A gauge and then a double O gauge. Now, the way this works is this uh, gauge has this little uh, pad at the bottom and a pin sticking out that's spring-loaded. And based on how much resistance is applied to that pin to, uh, to get the rest of that pad flush with the pin, that's what determines the softness or hardness of a given material. So the firmer you have to push down on that gauge to get a reading, the... Uh, the harder the material is going to be. So uh, obviously the double O scale is much more sensitive, but the way this works is we take this and put this on the table and use that scale, that gauge to press into the material. And obviously you don't want to push so hard that you get a false reading, but as soon as the base of the uh, gauge touches the surrounding rubber, that's when you should get an accurate reading. Now, a Shore A gauge is not something I expect everybody to run out and buy to measure their materials, but it's important to know how this works and how that reading is obtained. And if you do a lot of work in rubber and plastic materials, it is a really good investment to have an accurate gauge on hand to check some of the materials. So that's the basics of how a Shore double O scale or Shore A scale durometer work. So from left to right, on the left side we have very soft materials like human skin and we gradually get harder as we move up the scale to the right. Now the whole purpose of this scale is so when you're calling a material supplier like myself, we have a, a, an objective standard by which to measure the material that you are looking for. To give you an idea how this works, if you are looking for a soft rubber material, soft is a very ambiguous term. Uh, soft could mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. To someone working in plastics, they may consider a car tire to be soft. So this is where the double O and the Shore A scale come into play. This allows us to apply a numerical value to a given rubber or plastic material. So in this case, we're just going to stick to elastomers or rubber materials. And more specifically for this video, we're going to stick to our new platinum silicone materials. Now to give you an idea of the different feels of the different materials, on the soft end there with the double O or double OT scale, you'll notice that overlaps slightly. And really what's happening there is obviously there's not a zero on that scale. So what we're really doing is breaking down the very low end of the Shore A scale and getting a much more nuanced look at that very lowest part of the Shore A scale. So, for instance, down at a what's really a triple O five, there around that area, you would have what would be like fatty tissue or very, very soft organic material. A short double O uh, twenty five or twenty is going to be about like your earlobe. 
and then moving up to a 30 and 50, that's gonna give us more like the tips of your fingers. So moving over to the shore A scale, we're going to start with a shore A10, which again would be like fairly firm, humid skin, like the tips of your fingers. And then moving up to about a 20 or 25, we have like a rubber band. And then moving up to about a 40 shore A, you would have like a pencil eraser. Uh, between a 40 and a 50 or so is a common running shoe sole. And as we move up higher into the 60, 70 range, that's where we're going to find the average car tire. And then moving on harder than that, up in the 80 to 90 range, that's where we would find something like a roller skate wheel or an industrial roller or even a hard hat. That's where we start to get into uh, rubber materials that are so hard they're starting to approach the properties of a semi-rigid plastic. So if you're making medical simulators and special effects skins and things like that, typically you're going to be operating in the low end of the A scale or somewhere on the double O or double O scale. Now on the soft end of the scale, the new SkinCast series of platinum silicones, that, those are all going to fall into the double O scale. So at the very bottom, we actually have a triple O five, and that's an even more uh, nuanced scale of really soft gel materials. But uh, for this video, we're going to stop at that lowest end, the triple O five. Now up from that, we have the double O ten, and then the fifty one hundred, which is a, a an excellent mask making and doll making silicone with really high strength. And then of course we have the double O thirty and double O fifty. Now all of those can be laminated or layered to create very realistic skin effects, like for suture pads and the stop the bleed with uh, where you're plugging gunshot wounds. Uh, all of these can be used together to simulate very realistic human skin. And the reason I say human skin for all of those is if you feel around on your skin, you'll find that you can feel different densities of tissue underneath and different softnesses. So obviously a human skin is not a big chunk of rubber. So to get that as accurately simulated as possible, sometimes it requires laminating multiple materials together to get that effect. And at the end of this video, I'll link to some of the previous tutorials we've done where we've done that with the skin cast silicones. So again, at the very bottom of the scale, at least for us, we have the 0005, which I wouldn't really use on its own by itself. It's a very soft, very fragile gel, but really good for simulating fatty tissue. And then up from that, we have the 0010, which again, still really soft in what I would consider a very soft gel, but uh, really in industry terms, that would be considered a firm gel. And then we have the 25, which would be about like your earlobe, and the 30 and the 50, which be about, about like the tips of your fingers. So if you were making a medical simulator where you wanted something to feel very soft and realistic, you could use a thin membrane of the 0050 on the outside backed up with the 0005 underneath. Now moving up to the shore A scale, here we have kind of a mix of different materials. The 5110 is really a dual purpose material that could work as a very soft mold material as well as an effects skin material. So uh, the 5110, and you'll notice this with all the 51 series, the 51 is first telling you that that's one of the one-to-one the -one platinum silicones, and then the last two digits tell you the uh, shore A value. So the 5110 is going to be the softest uh, on the A scale. And the 5110 is ideal for both effects skins as well as uh, really soft silicone molds. So molds that have really deep undercuts, one piece molds. Uh, anytime you have a, a really delicate pattern or you're molding soap or uh, wax parts, candles, that sort of thing, where you need it to easily release without breaking the part, 5110 is an excellent silicone for that. Now moving up, we have the 5130. Now 5130, you might have seen in a previous tutorial where we use that to mold a K-bar knife. Uh, 5130 is excellent for cup block molds. It has enough flexibility that it can pull around uh, some fairly decent undercuts, but it's still firm enough that we can make a nice two-piece mold where that fits back together and keys nicely and isn't too soft. 
Now moving on up, we have the 5140, and that of course is a 40 Shore A. And 5140, you might have seen a previous tutorial where we use that to make a quick little face mold. And as a side note, all of these on the Shore A scale, the 5110, the 5130, the 5140, and the 5150, all of these can be thickened with the Thixo additive to make brush on molds or brushed in skins for casting. So the 5140 is a 40 Shore A firmer silicone. And then we have the 5150. And 5150 is a really firm uh, Shore A50 silicone. And this kind of really firm silicone is good for making two-piece molds of things like electronic enclosures and very angular parts that can be very precise. And you don't want the mold wall sagging or anything like that during casting. So if you're casting like really thin walled parts, a really firm silicone like 5150 is ideal for that. And also, this is another one of the unique things about this whole product line, the 5110 through 5150, is these are all translucent materials. And that means these can also be used for casting applications. So in addition to using these as mold materials, they also double as uh, prototype materials for casting uh, silicone prototypes of soft to even firm silicone parts. So again, those can be pigmented both for the mold making process, but also to pigment them as a casting material. So very versatile product line that again, extends all the way down to the Shore A10, all the way up to 5150. So there you have the double O scale and the Shore A scale. And it's really important to have a good visual of those two scales in your head when you're picking out materials for both the molding and the casting process. Because many of you that do product development or casting medical simulators, it's a really good idea to have a good understanding of those two scales and how those numbers look and what they equate to so that you can request the right material when you're speaking to a supplier such as myself. And also in the molding stage, this is really important information because if you are going to be molding something with really deep undercuts, typically that's going to require something really soft and stretchy like 5110. Whereas those of you molding thin walled electronic enclosures and other more angular parts, you're probably going to be drawn more to the uh, really firm silicones like the 5140 and 5150. Now, as is custom, I will put in the video description all of the links to the products that were discussed in this video, and of course, a link to our video library. So be sure to check out those links in the video description, and as is custom on the YouTubes. Be sure to like and subscribe if, of course, you like this video and want to support our efforts. We always appreciate that. And if you click that little bell icon, that notifies you when we put out new content. So thanks for watching.